Alex Elite Golf, and thanks for coming on the channel again, Simon. Thank you, nice to be here. So, down here at Motcham Hall, you've got your Elite Golf Performance. Just tell a little bit of people about what it's all about. So, the Elite Golf Performance is something I've been thinking about for a good few years now. It's all aspects of the game, from the fitness side of it, to short game, to the mental side as well. Your course management, your visualisation on the course, things like that. Um, I've played a lot of golf and I've seen a lot of good golfers yeah, come yeah. and go. Um, and there's, for me, there's nothing more disappointing than seeing somebody who should have achieved done, something definitely. not. And uh, that's where I would hope I could maybe help them. I think the great thing about this is you're not saying it's, it's necessarily going to improve someone technically, but you're going to improve the way they practice, the way they move on the golf course, the way they think on the golf course, and all doing it all in kind of one day. Absolutely. The way they think, I think, is the main one, the main one, because, you know, just silly mistakes. The amount of time, even myself, the amount of times I'd hit a shot and I'd think, oh, I should have stepped off that. Yeah. I didn't, I wasn't thinking clearly on that shot. I think a lot of people can kind of relate yeah. to that. Yeah, and, you know, you, on the range, you get a target and that's all you see. But, and you hit it lovely on the range. So many people can't seem to take the range game to the course. Definitely. So I just think picking out specific targets on the course is huge. Thinking about what shot you want to hit. Closing your eyes, picturing that shot, seeing yourself hit the shot before you actually do, and then stepping into it and letting it happen. Perfect. So this kind of nicely crosses over to what we're going to speak about today. <coughs> I kind of feel, and I think you do as well, a lot of people kind of work in their practice and on the golf course probably as well, too technically. Yeah. So what is this jaw going to do? We're going to walk about start line, ball position. How can this help and what are the good way about doing this to help improve? I think the basics are absolutely fundamental. You see Ian Pulse as your prime example. Sure. All he ever works on is ball position and line. And, you know, he's, he's, got, a, he's, he's got a very yeah. talented lad, but he's, he's achieved so much. Um, and I just think a lot of people just bypass it. So with working on this, you know if you're aiming right and your ball position's right, when you step up on that first tee, you think, I want to aim at that tree. You stand up to it, you know you're aiming at that tree. If you don't work on it, you don't know if you're aiming at that tree. And I think it comes to truth when a lot of people maybe go for a lesson, maybe don't, but one <coughs> of the friends goes, do you know where you're aiming there? And it's like 30 yards right and they feel like it's down the middle. Absolutely. We were talking about it before. <laughs> uh, I played nine holes with a lad the other day and he was just aiming 20 yards right, and he couldn't understand why he hit everything right. And as soon as we lined him up properly, you know, he started finding most fairways, and, and it just totally changed the way he looked at the shot. So what club have you got here? So I've just got a pitching wedge okay. here. So I always like to just, for starters, I like to work on just a pitching wedge, ball position. I know I get my ball position a bit too far in front of me. Okay and I aim a bit too far left. So for me, this is a, a massive drill. Probably one of the things that helps you when you're playing as well, like Absolutely. doing the fundamentals. So Absolutely. just tell the viewers, what is your ball position with a <coughs> pitching wedge? So a pitching wedge, I tend to go smack bang in the middle. Smack bang in the middle. Um, obviously, I, I want to push it a little bit further back that. that way. So sometimes I might even go a bit further back just to exaggerate because mine you know it gets so a little far, bit far forward. I know forward. it gets a bit too far forward. And I guess um, if you didn't do this, you wouldn't probably know that about your game. If you didn't no, put you two wouldn't. alignment sticks down, this rod down, you wouldn't know if it was too far forward, if you're aiming left, aiming right. You wouldn't have a clue. You'd, you'd just go what came naturally. You'd look at a shot and think, right, I know I'm aiming right. And then you put your line down, you step back, look at it, and you're like, wow, yeah, yeah. that's a long way off. So I just think, work on the basics. Really stick to the basics every time you practice. I would have lines down. Oh. Right, okay, so ball position, smack bang in the middle, alignment, nice. Nice. So that's your ball position for pitch and wedge. Yep. Where would you have it for your 7 iron? 7 iron just goes a little bit further forward in the stance. Let me get the line up. So 7 iron, I'd probably have it just in front of, in the middle. Just in front of central. So just, so just your zip line here and you're jumping your yep. just this side of it? Just this side of it. Just favouring the left foot. Perfect. So as you kind of go through your set, you, you continuously move this. You wouldn't just move your body. You'd move the actual set up. Uh, I would move the actual set up, yeah. Um, and then obviously you work away. 
three wood I'd probably get around there and then driver just try and get it just inside my left heel. Perfect. So we talked about ball position, mm -hmm. one of us will kind of call it our first fundamental. Yeah. What is a second thing that can really help people improve without trying to really take their big swing overhaul or yeah. changes? I mean, I think you can change your swing the most by just doing the simple things and just doing them well. If I, if the only other club I practiced with was a, was a wedge, I think I could still go and hit my driver in two weeks' time and swing it as good as I ever have done yeah. because you're working on the proper things. Yeah. Um, and I get a little bit long as well with my woods. So with me practicing with this type of club, club yeah. shortens it up as well. But start line is everything as well. I think a lot of people kind of see the target, picture it, or maybe don't picture it, hit it, and they don't realise they're starting the ball 10 yards left or 15 Absolutely. yards right. Whereas if you've got something that we've got a line that sticks here, yeah. so it's a focus on, I think it, I think it just maybe, not necessarily you realise it happens, but you definitely focus your attention in on it. Absolutely. If you can start it on, a, on the line that you want to start it on every single time, you're not going to go far wrong. No. It's like putting. Exactly. If you start it on line, you know it's got a chance. And it's the same throughout the whole of your game. If you're aiming at a tree, you're going, I'm going to start it on that tree, and you start it 10, 15 yards right of it, how do you expect to hit the shot that you want to hit? Exactly. So start line is everything. And I just tend to put a pole in, angle it away from you, so that if you do happen to hit, hit it, it, you're not going to snap it. But So here, I'm looking at this, thinking I'm going to start this just right of the pole and hit a little draw. I say if you're a fader, you'd start it just left. Try start to it just left, off. yeah. And you, then you just move, uh, you just move the stick a little bit further. But for me, I stand over this and I think, right, that's perfect. I just want to hit it four, three or four inches just right at that pole and just hit the draw. Oh, perfect. Let's see it. Right. Okay. So middle of the stance again. Nice. That's so just right. This is what we were saying here is this is kind of our ultimate setup, ball position, work on start line, and it's yeah. not going to give you a big swing overhaul, but it will improve your golf. It's just the simple things, but it will improve everything. So I, I also think, just on a different point here, if you're someone that slices the ball, this would be a good setup. So you, like you said there, if you try and start it just to the right of this. It'd be a great setup, yeah. And um, get the right ball position for one. Yeah. And then from second point, can you pick to start on it right? Because if you're notoriously a slicer, people start it way left of target. Yeah. So now, imagine this was a tree, lime stick, whatever it is. Yeah. Concentrate on your external focus being this side of it and start seeing that ball hopefully with the opposite spin. See, if you were a big slice of the ball, I would massively recommend this, but I wouldn't recommend full shots. I'd okay. say, right, just pick a, pick a spot 40, 50 yards with a wedge and maybe even just think, right, this is the path I need to hit on to get it right at that stick. And then maybe just even just even hit shots like that and little think, right, versions. that's how it felt. It started right. It was a little bit of draw on it. And just do that. Just hit little shots like that, mini versions. And, and then, then like, like you touched on earlier, like if this is the only club you practiced with, if you can get it right with this, I know it's not necessarily going to get it right with driver for everybody, but it would definitely help that transition towards driver. Massively. And you just build up. You couldn't expect to, if you slice it, you couldn't expect to hit that shot and then it pick a driver up and go, well, why no. am I still slicing it? <laughs> exactly. You'd work at it, you'd get that, and then you'd hit further shots, and then you'd hit full shots, and then you'd maybe change to like an eight iron and try it with that. And even teeing it up might help, because you might think, well, I'm going to catch this a bit fat if, I hit, if I'm hitting with you, if you're coming into it and um, out to in. All of a sudden you might think, well, I'll catch it fat. Tee it up, just yeah. make it a little bit easier. We're only working on club path. So just little things like that will all help. And you're kind of doing this without thinking it as well, because people might think they slice it and they might not go for a lesson or do something about it because they feel like it would be a big, big change. Whereas yeah. get the ball position correct first and foremost, get set up correctly in terms of alignment, and then have a play around with working on this. Even yeah. if you're a better player, I also think this would be something where you could actually work on different shot shapes and maybe find your stock shot, which I know we talked about earlier. This is something you try and help people to do, get a routine, find out what works for them and basically ultimately help their performance. Absolutely. And if you do find that you're, you're a big slicer or you're a big, you know, hooker of the ball, ball position, just have a little play about with it. If you hit a high cut, put it back in your stance and try and hit little low draws and sure. just feel what your body's doing as you're hitting that and then just work, work with it. Perfect. Thanks for coming on the channel. Lovely. Thank you.
Guys, don't forget to check out Simon on Instagram. His handle will be down below, as well as all the content that's going to be coming out in the coming months. Some fantastic things on and off the golf course to help improve your golf. Don't forget to subscribe and see you next time.